first aspect of electric propulsion is how to read a torque for, uh, is how do you how you read um, a torque versus RPM gra graph. Now, first, now the thing about electric motors, and this is one of the attractive things about electric motors, is a you get instant torque, and b that torque is is constant. And as you can see, for 700, 600. Basically, the more the voltage is, the more constant the, uh, the um, torque is going to be. But as you can see, the lower the voltage, you'll be able to go on for a little bit. Then she, uh, uh, you'll be, you'll be able to go on for a little bit. Then she drops off. Ditto. So that's uh, and the more you go up in voltage, uh, the the better that's go uh, the better that's going to be. And as you can see um, with um, your power curve, it's pretty much a straight linear ca power curve. But you can see how it drops off. For your ver uh, uh, for um, your various voltages, and we'll talk touch upon how to do that, uh, how to specify that in just a moment. But the unique thing about electric propulsion is that the battery and the motor are fundamentally linked. It is a the two of them literally go hand in hand. Probably a lot more so than in uh, than with the internal combustion engine. Yes, the fuel you use is very important, but to an extent, you can sort of cover that with engine tuning for an internal combustion engine sure if the if the petrol's terrible if the fuel if your fuel is awful you're not going to get around with it but within most uh, within um uh, uh, within most turbine um, cases you can tune around it quite a bit with electric propulsion your there are two bits to it that's uh, your battery pack and your electric propulsion and these two are fundamentally linked and you've really got to get your head around that to understand electric propulsion Specifying the pack you need. Okay, you first of, first of all, start off by determining the power you need. Now, nothing happens in a vacuum. Start from an internal combustion engine application to determine the power you're going to need. Then you look at this engine curve here. Once you know the power you want, you look at this power curve here to determine the battery uh, to um, determine the voltage you require. Once you know the voltage uh, you require, then you can go off and calculate the number of um, LiPo cells you need in series. Then you need to calculate the current draw. The reason you need to calculate the current draw is for two is for two very important reasons. Number one, it'll tell you the C rating and the battery capacity you need from a battery. We're also going to use that a little ways to just calculate what you're going to, the sort of um, current you're going to use over the lap. So, without further ado, what you do is you take some typical existing data for an IC engine, and what you're going to do in particular, you're going to concentrate on how much time you're going to be spending under throttle and how much time you're going to be spending under brakes. They're going to be two important variables for you to get your head around how much energy you're going to be discharging from the battery pack and how much you can put back in. So in terms of calculating out the amount of uh, charge you're going to need, all you need to do is go back here and look at your full throttle and, mul and uh, basically add up the amount of time you're under full throttle. Now, this is not going to give you an exact answer, but just remember, part of the art of being an engineer is being able to look at some basic bits of data so you can start in your own mind to understand uh, to um, start to quantify it. It's going to make your more advanced techniques be a lot easier since you've already got some sort of idea of what the answer is going to be. So in this particular case, we spend about 52 seconds under full throttle. So at full noise, at we're drawing 332 amps. So we're going to be using about 4.8 ampere hours. Now, let's presume that we can harvest about 100 kilowatts worth of that energy. So what we've got here is that the amount of current we can put back in the battery pack is going to be, uh, is um, uh, going to be, P on V, which is 100,000 divided by 500 is 200 amp. And so the amount of charge we can put back into the battery pack, which is going to be, we spend 8.8 .8 seconds on the brakes, so that's 0.5 of an ampere hour. So the total discharge is going to be 4.3 ampere hours. Now, this brings up actually a really, really interesting point about the real difference about using electrics for a racing application as opposed to a road application. I'm, and really, your answer is in everything that we've just discussed here, and I'll give you a hint. Have a look at this throttle curve and think about what that looks like for a road car as opposed to a race car. Then work through these numbers here and you can see why it's um, uh, an electric road car is a bit of a different beast to an electric race car. But I'll let you have a ponder about that. A taster of what is to come. As I indicated, um, as I've indicated in this tutorial, 
Electric powertrains are now incorporated into chassis sim, and we now have um, uh, customers in Formula E. So here's a taster of what's basically out there right now with chassis sim. As you can see, you've got all the, the standard chassis sim variables, which is um, which is speed, steer, throttle, etc., etc. But the last four, uh, but the last three traces are very interesting. You've got voltage pack, current sure. Uh, you've um, uh, got uh, the current you've drawn from the pack, and the ampere uh, and the ampere hours that you have used. This really give for uh, for existing chassis sim users. And for people who are um, just getting into electric applications, this is a very, very powerful tool that's just been added to Chassis Sim. And uh, we'll be having that in an official release very, very shortly. So, to sum up, again, electric propulsion isn't difficult. It's just different to what you are used to. And I really cannot stress that point enough. But the great thing about getting your heads around electric propulsion is there are some simple hand calcs that we've discussed that it's going to be really useful in terms of getting your head around what to do and what not to do and how to quantify all this. The other thing that I also want to stress is that the battery pack and the motor are fundamentally linked. That's the really big thing to start getting your head at around um, electric propulsion. And lastly, don't be a hero. Start with existing data and use that to determine what you need. If you try and go from a complete blank sheet of paper, you're going to go absolutely nuts. So I really want to leave you with those reflections. Now, what we're going to discuss in part two is that we're going to just talk about the more advanced applications, thing to think about, like cell, the impact of... Um, so a pack temperature and uh, motor temperature we'll talk about the implications in terms of what you can do in terms of packaging um, uh, batteries and sort of leave you with a few thoughts about where sort of electric propulsion sort of feeds into the food chain a little bit so we're going to talk about that in our next uh, tutorial but really my homework for you guys for the time being is to go away do some basic hand calcs look at some data and really start to get your head around what the numbers for electric powertrains are going to do and we'll catch you in uh, the next episode of dan's vehicle dynamics corner